Sometimes a topic just announces itself as in need of discussion, so bear with me while I take the scenic route here in talking. There's a British sitcom from the early 20-teens called Toast of London that follows Matt Berry as a struggling actor who is always on the fringe of greatness. He never really achieves much. He always gets crappy jobs from his terrible agent and... Just like all great British sitcoms, it's hilarious, but it also has a bitter pathos to it. There's a little bit of truth to his character. One of the running gags is that he doesn't know who any of the famous actors or names of people who are really popular right now, who are actually in his field. He only knows the weirdos and oddities from his own little insular circle. So he's always just in his own world, obsessed with his own craft and obsessed with what he thinks he should be doing as an actor. And the truth in that is that I found myself relating to that. I think I've become like that a little too much. I don't really keep up with trends. I don't know who the current most popular rock acts are or music acts in general. I don't really know who Guthrie is. I see him everywhere and just from looking at his pictures and the guitar he plays, I can kind of guess what he's going to sound like without needing to hear him. But no matter how much I found myself sort of becoming like the Stephen Toast character, there was always one cross-generational truth that everybody could agree on. Jeff Beck was king. I can only really describe him as a stoic. He understood the value of phrasing like nobody else. He understood taking your time, letting silences hang so that you're anticipating what he's going to do next, and never being in a rush to say anything. Guitarists are in a lot of ways a really lazy bunch. We can make lots of noise easily, we play lots of notes easily, we tend to fall back on comfortable finger patterns and licks and things that we have practiced and are mannered in. I always used to say that Beck knew how to phrase like a horn player. He knew how to make it sing. And it felt like you weren't listening to a solo, you were listening to a great lecturer. And that's what you get when you are listening to somebody who is a great craftsman. In the last few years, there have been deaths of a lot of people that I really admired. Uh, Tim Smith's death in 2020 really hit hard. Uh, Bowie, Neil Peart, like a lot of people. Uh, the comedian Sean Locke really surprised me and really hurt. But this time it feels... But this time it feels different. Um... It kind of feels like how someone commented on one of the videos. It felt like waking up and finding a mountain had disappeared. Because it doesn't just feel like we lost an artist who did his own thing. It feels like we genuinely lost a craftsman, like somebody who made katanas or made beautiful woodwork. Somebody who was a singular voice. It genuinely feels like craft in general took a hit. Because Beck was one of the few people I could point to and say, this is a guy who, when you listen to him play, you 100% know that everything you are hearing, every noise, every little tweet, every little thing that is happening from his fingers is 100% intentional. He is completely in control of what is happening. So it feels like craftsmanship in general is struggling. There's a video on YouTube that showed up in my recommendations. It's about three minutes long. It's at three minutes into this tiny little shop where a young girl is studying to learn the art of clog making. And they make a point in there of saying, you know, it might not be an art that is needed anymore, but once this knowledge is lost, it's gone. It's extinct. There's nothing coming back if it's not anywhere except with the person learning it. A lot of these things can't be learned in the books. A lot of them can't be learned except through apprenticeship. So the death of Beck really sort of, it brings up this question I've had for a while about the loss of apprenticeship in the modern world and craftsmanship. You know, image is one thing, but when I was in college, the absolute most talented, hardworking musicians that I knew, they always looked like they just rolled out of bed and needed a shower and were exhausted all the time. Basically, they looked like Jacob Collier. <laughs> if I'm saying his name right. Uh, they weren't fashionable, singular voices who had a style and look all their own. They were... They weren't prodigies. They weren't virtuosos. They were your hardworking apprentices who were in 
the practice room 18 hours every day with instruments, with music, just mastering their craft. And my, I found myself playing devil's advocate because I don't want to be the stick in the mud who acts like, oh, everything needs to be preserved, everything is precious, every little skill set, every little thing needs to be preserved. Guitar is on the decline. You know, Gibson went bankrupt. You listen to any music on the radio. The guitar is always just in the background of the mix because right now there's a real push to, for the retro 70s vibe. Most everything sounds like a regressive disco sound now, so you just get that chimey guitar in the mix. It's never in the forefront. And nothing actually feels or sounds instrument-based anymore. Nothing really sounds like it's human. So when you take that out, take out the hard workers who are in the trenches producing this stuff, are we going to look back on this as the period of music that we just, oh yeah, that was the time when we made our music with, uh, you know, grandpa's guitars, with instruments that we actually had to control with our fingers and actually had to pluck instead of just screens and knobs and sliders. And it is easy to think that way. It's easy to be cynical about it. I made the analogy when I was discussing this with my wife of um, uh, nobody nobody long form hand writes any of their work anymore. If somebody says they're writing something, they're usually writing it on a word processor. That's the inference now. Nobody sits there and writes their first draft of anything long form anymore. They might take notes, but they don't do an actual sentence long prose, fully thought out five paragraph essay anymore like that. So at the time, was anybody worried about the death of handwriting? Were they worried that, oh no, the uh, the typewriter, the keyboard, it's all going to take the art of handwriting? I'm not talking about the argument of um, cursive writing. I'm talking about the actual ability to long-form handwrite things. Did people worry that that was going to die off, that people were going to lose that art? And no, it's still around. You just evolve with the times. So I thought about music and said, is the loss of a craftsman like this a great loss? And yeah, because... Writing isn't a performance. It's not something that can be a singular event in time like a performance. So when that is lost, it's lost to time. I really want to believe that there will be people who come along and take up the craft and actually do care about it. And there, I'm sure there are, but I don't know if they will have the cross-generational appeal and acceptance and reverence. And I understand it feels like all these greats are dying off. They're all old white guys, but they were earth shakers at a time. And so I can only hope that, you know, take your time and learn your craft. I had the advantage of sitting in my room for most of high school where I didn't really spend time with friends much. I just worked on the guitar. I just worked on my craft. I don't know if I'll ever have time to do something like that again in my life. But, you know, put in your thousand hours. Really focus on that because you might be remembered the way Beck will be. So I just want to say rest in peace, Beck, and uh, you will be missed. He made a difference to me in my life. He made a difference in my study of the instrument, my understanding of it. And it's a debt that I can never repay, like so many others. So peace to him and peace to all of you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>